It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears, and it's all up next. First open way back in 1924, but renovated in 2002. There's a look inside Venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. Today, it's a black and blue matchup in the NFC North between the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Just outside the goal line. Oh, good return up past the 30. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State. It's Justin Fields. Coming out of Ohio State, one of the top prospects in the NFL draft, and it was so big that they moved up in the draft to get him, to make sure that they had him. And, boys, he got the full package. Loves the game, big time arm, 4-4 speed. So good that another quarterback prospect said to him, what's it feel like to run 4-4? Everybody wants to be that fast. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Although a jet sweep to start the drive. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, I sure wouldn't be surprised if we see more of this as this game goes on because we know they like to use their wideouts either on quick throws or on jet sweeps like what we just saw there. And to say that that one worked well, partner, that's stating the obvious. From the 39, Fields. Fields, we know he has the good mobility. He flashes it there as he scrambles for the first down. It's a game to the line of scrimmage. He knew he didn't need much to reset the chain, so when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. On first and ten, here's Fields. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They'll give him four yards there, and it's second down. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. Four yards there on the keeper, but still going to bring up a third down. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, 
then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Komet. And he will have the Bears first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. Fields on first down. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Eric Stokes. And the Packers are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Well, they certainly weren't afraid to let it fly early, and they hope that'll keep the defense honest and keep the offensive guys excited about getting back out there. They are in attack mode in this game. It did backfire a little bit. Now you're just hoping your defense can keep them off the scoreboard so you're not facing a deficit the next time you run out there. A six foot four inch Jordan Love taking the field for the first time. The 2020 first round pick from Utah State set to lead Green Bay. And at the start of Jordan Love's NFL career, he had one of the best seats in the stadium watching Aaron Rodgers work. But now he's looking for more than that. Rocket arm, big play potential. And he wants to show this organization that he's capable of being a dependable starter for the foreseeable future. Loving the Packers now with a first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. Following the interception, Love. A check down here to Jones. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. And once again, he's going to be stopped up behind the line. Second straight play. Shades of the 85 Bear defense a little bit. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. On third down, Love. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he is going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And his tight end there to pick up the first, Charles. And you use the proper word there, dependable. And sometimes spectacular because tight ends nowadays, they can do it all. But they're the guys you trust, especially across the middle of the field where there's traffic. He delivers, and they pick up nice yardage. Love, they go play action now. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Working out of the gun. Love. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlines. But incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe tap sequence, right? I was ready to call the tippy toes if that one was completed. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Love. He's going to air one out. And that would be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. So one first down on that drive, and that's it. Forced to take the deep shot on third down and couldn't hit it. Now they have to punt this one away. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. Oh, 
And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return, and the Bears take over. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Quick slant, caught by Moore. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Well, maybe that'll help him settle back into a groove after the interception on the first drive here, picking up the first to start drive number two. And it is just starting over, isn't it? Sometimes it's just how you have to do it. You have to erase things from your mind. Don't worry about what happened before because over the course of a game, the good players, things turn out pretty well for them, and that's what he's trying to do here. Now a first down throw, Fields. This is Chase Claypool on the receiving end. A big play there on the catch and run, 65 yards. I don't think there's anyone who could possibly doubt how fast he could run in the open field. But if there were, he silenced those thoughts there. And sometimes you see big plays develop on a route like this, a slam route. And the object, very simple. Get the ball to your receiver in stride. This one was right on the money. He didn't miss a beat. And then it's off to the races, and there he goes. And the next-gen stats are going to tell the story. And wow, what a story it is. Nearly a full 23 miles an hour. One of the fastest plays on record, folks. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. Looking at this now, you get a couple more cracks here. This close, sneak it. I don't think even go into a huddle. Just line up, snap it, and fall in behind those guys into the end zone. score after one on EA Sports. Back in Chicago, ready for the second quarter. It's the Bears in possession. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Well, big man with ball. Met bigger man on the other side of the line. A really nice play for the defense. Through a couple of plays, this Green Bay defense is held strong. Now it's third and goal. They'll go with a touch pass here, trying to pick it up. And a nice move will yield nothing as he's stopped behind the line. Well, they tried to catch him by surprise, I think, there with that little pop pass on third down, but no luck. You're right about no luck, but I did like the idea. I like the thought process. Make an unconventional call on third down sometimes. It can pop big. In this case, it didn't. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. Kari Blassengabe taking it in for two yards out. And the Bears post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. And I guess that's where you turn on fourth and goal to your muscle back there. Hand him the football. He does the dirty work. I think you're asking a lot of your defense there, right? Having to make the stand, have to prepare for just about any type of play to be called. And then here comes the power right at you. On that play, the big man got into the end zone. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. And he's got it to make it 7-0 in favor of the Bears. So the drive there took six plays. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Santos 
chance to kick this one away. Taking it about the one. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Here's Love. And this one complete to Reed. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. From the 30 on second down, Love. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Throwing. Love. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. So just three yards on the completion there, and it'll be second down. I don't care what sport you're playing, everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. They will throw again here with Jordan Love. His throw incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Now Love. It's caught inside the 25. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Give them 35 yards there on the third down conversion. Let's face it, the focus is going to be at the end of this play on the big time gain, right? He lined up on the left and worked his way all the way to the right before the perfect pass found him. But how about the offensive line and the protection to give him enough time to work his way all the way across the field? So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Love going to give this one to Jones. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four to throw now. Here's Love. Flushed out right. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble. And now it's third down. Two minutes on the clock. Second quarter. 7-0 ball game. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Love looking to throw it. He finds Watson complete. Touchdown! Christian Watson, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Packers are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. An excellent, long, sustained offensive drive. And now they can look across the field and see a defense that looks a little bit beaten down. Right now, as an offensive coordinator, you're thinking to yourself, can I dial up the knockout punch? Now the extra point.
It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that drive in total eight plays. And it was all capped off by a touchdown catch from Christian Watson. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Taken in at the three. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Onto the field now come the Bears. The long drive last time out for this offense, Charles, if you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now, but let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Fields throw complete here to commit. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pickup there, 21 yards. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. The result, only four yards there on the play, and it'll be second down. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, Big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. Coming up on a second and six. to throw his fields. That pass complete to Moore. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Third and two, Fields. Gets past one man. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. They asked him to take charge and get them to a spot where they could at least attempt to kick before the half. And he does just that. Didn't trust what he saw downfield. So he took it upon himself to get them into field goal range using his legs. That's coming through with a play they needed in a big spot. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Back to throw, Fields. He's gonna let this go. Back of the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. Chase Claypool as the first half is winding down. And the Bears have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front and now See on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Santos now to add the PAT. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive spanned five plays. And it was finished off by the Chase Claypool touchdown catch.
much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away. This one fielded at the five. Offense ready to get their next drive underway. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. The last run got six, now second and four. To pass, here's Jordan Love. Over the middle here, it's hauled in by Watson. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. second down so we have reached halftime with a touchdown that's the difference on the scoreboard as we'll send you down to orlando and we check in with jonathan coachman for our ea sports halftime report coach all right brandon thanks very much welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown orlando and the ea sports halftime report first up though a look at the next gen stats for the packers in that first half and they weren't able to get a whole lot done throwing the football That'll likely be a big key if they want to turn things around in the second half. Meanwhile, for the Bears, they were even better throwing the football. Lots of open receivers to choose from, and you can bet that'll continue to be a focus in the second half. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. set to get the football first and they are trailing on the scoreboard as we resume action ready for the third quarter this fielded right at the goal line and he's only going to make it to the 13 yard line and no further and the Packers ready to go to start quarter number three Charles it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room haven't really been able to get anything going offensively virtually nothing in the ground attack either so certainly something has to change here in quarter three and I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Love now. 
And this is going to be incomplete. The Bears are going to come up empty on this first drive of the second half. Still down by that slim margin. Yeah, and that's okay. You know, when, when you sit and analyze it, they're not happy about what happened, having to go to the bench. But this gives them a chance to let their defense do some work while they on the sidelines go over what they're doing offensively and formulate a proper plan. O'Donnell, he's on to punt as he gets this one away. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And they will take over first and 10. Just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games. And, and we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. And they'll run the option to start the drive. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little game there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. Give him 10 yards on the keeper, and it'll lead to a second down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. Field's going to keep it once more. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Five yards that time, taking it himself, and he has it up for the first. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. First down, it's Fields. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. A loss of four that time on the sack, and it brings up second. Well, we've seen how this quarterback can beat you with his legs. Saw it earlier on this drive, as a matter of fact. But that time, they had him covered. They really gave him no place to escape because oftentimes they're able to find a crack, a sliver, anything that can get them upfield. On that occasion, nothing open at all, and they swarmed him. So after the sack, here's second and 14. Fields now to throw. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Fields. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Well, give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. The offense schemed going five wide, trying to create a chance for the big shot, and they took it. If he comes down with that one, that's a huge offensive swing. But credit the defense with a nice play, knocking that one away. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. First down, going to the air with Love. That's going to be caught downfield by Reed. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Holding offense. 
So apparently some grabbing of the jersey there on the O-line. Yeah, just look in the interior, and that's where the penalty occurred. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Looking to throw. Love. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll just get rid of it. Well, defensively, they haven't let him just sit in the pocket and get comfortable. And that's opposite a lot of game plans in today's NFL. Ordinarily, you're trying to keep the quarterback hemmed in. In this case, they brought the heat, and if he flushes out, they're fine with that, and they force another incompletion. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Operating from the gun, Love. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Holding offense. offense. So they will tread backward on the holding penalty. And I know that they're going to get coached up and they'll get yelled out a little bit, but let's face it, it is hard not to do at the speed and pace that they play. Now a second down throw for Love here. Completed out left to Dobbs. So the completion good for seven there. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. to throw. Love. And a throw there going to be incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there. They forced him to throw that one into college and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He juked him. 43 yards on the punt, seven yard return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Chicago offense set to get started. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game, but why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. The Bears in good field position to start out first and 10 at the 41-yard line. One play action, Fields. And this will be caught by Mooney. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. Now it's Fields. Got his man complete over the middle. That's more. And they're going to get this up to midfield. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. That's a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal game. Now let's see the Packers defensively six DBs, so a dime look on third. Could play coverage or bring pressure. He's got a man open, it's Chase Claypool. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Gotta say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're gonna throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On first and 10, it's Herbert. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this break. 
You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Here's Fields. Complete on the quick throw to Moore. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Out of the gun, Fields. There's the Washington Husky. It's Dante Pettis. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. The Bears on the move. They've got another first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. They'll run with Foreman. Dances by at the 20. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand. They're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. On second down, a run with Herbert. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. A five-yard gain there makes it first and goal. Starting to feel a little to me like the air is coming out of the balloon, so to speak, defensively. They're taking their will from them right now. That's what they're doing. Whatever they want to call, it's working. They're handling things up front, and it's not just the offensive line. It's everyone. You're seeing the guys on the perimeter blocking downfield and making sure that they're secure. So, yeah, you're exactly right. The air is out of the balloon, and right now they're almost lifeless. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. A handoff for Herbert. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. Now Fields on third and goal. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sacked back at the nine-yard line. Kenny Clark in there to get it for a loss of three, and it will be fourth down. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Yeah, and that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. So a big one coming now for Cairo Santos. This to make it a two-score game. Santos' kick is up and through, and they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to 7. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for them. You're exactly right about that, and this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, it took the decision-making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. Santos 
Santos back out there to kick it away. This taken in at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. Loving the Packers now with a first and 10 at their own 18. Here's Love. Got his man, it's Bo Melton. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Solid way to start the drive, 13 yards, picking up the first. A good start there on first down, they've gotta have this drive. No doubt about it, down a couple of scores. They have to find a way to put it in the end zone. Chunk plays, explosive plays, that will be the key to this drive. Love now to pass on first down. Quick slant to Watson. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Well, the pressure gets to Love, and he'll go down. The former third-round pick, Justin Jones, bringing the lumber that time. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nicholas set five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every round that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Love. Able to find Jones. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there and for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jump start with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now Love dancing to his left. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Exactly what they were looking for. They've been giving up yardage. They've been letting them drive right downfield, but they got a sack right there. How about that for a little bit of revenge? The clock rolls as the Packers look to hurry things up. Looking right sideline, that's complete. And he gets us to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. A big gain there after going backwards, and that'll lead to a third down. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Here's Love. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that will be incomplete. They weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. Desperation time here. Love on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Bears will get the football back. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, exactly right.
The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds left to go. The win for the Bears just around the corner. They go down to a knee. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? <laughs> and the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in.